Everyone is in search of a better night's sleep. You really can't get enough of it, but how do we make that happen? Our ABC 15 Health Insider, Dr. Shad Marvasti, is joining us this morning to help us figure it out. Good morning. Good morning. So there are some serious health implications of not getting a good night's sleep. So let's start there. Unfortunately, as, as much as a third of all Americans actually report that they don't get enough sleep, uh, recommendation uh, for adults, usually before the age of 65, at that point, we start requiring a little bit less sleep. Um, but most adults, really, you need at least seven hours and eight hours is really optimum. So if you just kind of think about it, anyone who's watching this, you're probably in the category where you're getting less than that. And the less sleep you get, the more increased risk you have of pretty much every major disease out there. Uh, this includes heart disease, heart attacks, diabetes, uh, uh, cancer, a number of cancers are linked to it, um, just premature aging, rapid uh, aging, uh, and premature death. Uh, so ultimately, sleep is really so critical. Diet plays a major role uh, in your sleep patterns and getting good sleep. So are there some best and worst foods that can help with that? You know, if you really want to be ideal, most nights you shouldn't have alcohol past 4 p.m. as well as fat caffeine. You don't want to drink too much water. You want to focus your water drinking throughout the day because obviously you're going to have to get up uh, to go to the restroom. And so that's going to disrupt your sleep. And there's actually some foods that are higher in melatonin. For example, pistachios are the highest uh, in melatonin of any food. Certain teas can be really helpful, like chamomile tea, um, valerian root tea, which is a bit stronger, adding foods that are higher um, in tryptophan, um, you know, like sunflower seeds, fish, pumpkin seeds. Um, you know, uh, certain cheeses as well can help with it. You know, I think there's the adage people ask about the warm milk at night to sleep. That's been something that's been around for a long time. Part of that is because uh, milk actually has tryptophan in it, which is also found in Turkey uh, and a few other foods, uh, which can also improve sleep and mood because it's one of the precursors to serotonin and melatonin. The timing of eating is really important too. Um, you know, you want to try to eat I would say your last meal at least two and a half hours or so before you plan to sleep, because uh, otherwise you can get acid reflux and digestion, and that can also disrupt your sleep. You mentioned melatonin, and we do see that sold as a straight supplement. Mm -hmm. There are also some other products that claim to help you sleep. So um, what do we need to know ab about that, about taking melatonin or anything else that says it will help you sleep that's an over-the-counter? You really should talk to your doctor about it. And I think you first want to start doing sleep hygiene and making changes to your diet because some of those can also have side effects. Like, for example, I know people like to take Benadryl, you know, and if you're over the age of 60, that can also cause urinary retention and confusion, uh, has a lot of other side effects that you need to avoid. So I wouldn't just jump to that. Melatonin tends to be, I would say, on the safer end of potential sleep aids, as well as like chamomile tea, um, things like that. But even that, I would say you don't want to just like toy with it. You want to start with sleep hygiene and practices that help you get into a good pattern. And it's really the different things that you do around bedtime to send signals to your brain to raise your melatonin levels, which are the sleep hormone levels to get, get to bed, whatever it is, whether it's a meditation, not overstimulating yourself, minimizing bright light exposure and exposure to that blue light that comes from your screen. And also one thing that you might not think about is actually getting good natural light exposure from the sun early in the day and in the late afternoon. So around sunrise, if you were awake at that time and also around 4 p.m., that light exposure actually uh, goes into a place in our brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which actually sets our pattern. And so when we have that exposure during the day, our body knows at the right time at night to basically start to shut down and go to sleep. All those things, oftentimes I find with patients help a lot more than just popping a pill. And it's certainly sometimes it just takes those natural lifestyle tweaks to get the rest of your life in order. So great places for us to start this morning. Thank you. Thank you.